Well, good morning to you all. Oh, I've got this and this on, I think, at the moment. I'm booming. But uh, even before we start our worship, I felt I just wanted to say a few words to say how very, very good it is to be with you here this morning. I am so delighted to be able to do this, particularly those of you at St. Helens. I know it has been a very tricky time for you, so I am all the more delighted to be with you. I'm also aware that through that time, a good number of people have given a lot to the support and care uh, of the congregation and the parish here. Obviously, your wardens and readers, uh, present and former, um, your wonderful clergy, including Simon here and Sue, and other retired clergy, uh, and of course, your rather super area dean, who I am delighted <laughs> has another role in store for him uh, very soon, and I think that is a real, real reason uh, for rejoicing. Um, it's been a difficult time for me too, I think I want to say that, as a bishop, one longs to be with the clergy and lay leaders and parishes and people. And uh, in order to observe due process through some of the challenges of the last couple of years, it has been necessary to have that little step back. And I have felt that too. And I just want to say that uh, very clearly. Uh, it just so happens that the very first Sunday that I had opportunity uh, to come and join you for worship was the Feast of the Transfiguration. Uh, and it just strikes me standing here this morning how very appropriate that feels because everything can be transfigured through the love of God. And that feels like a good point at which to start our worship. So in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. We sing our first hymn, Come On and Celebrate. <coughs> Christ appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. As he is pure, all who have grasped this hope make themselves pure. So let us confess our sins that mar his image in us.
your unfailing kindness, so Lord, is in the heavens, and your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Your righteousness is like the strong mountains, and your justice as the great deep. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. For with you is the well of life, and in your light shall we see light. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may the Father forgive you by the death of his Son, and strengthen you to live in the power of the Spirit all your days. Amen. And we say together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, whose Son, Jesus Christ, was wonderfully transfigured before chosen witnesses upon the holy mountain, and spoke of the exodus he would accomplish at Jerusalem. Give us strength, so to hear his voice and bear our cross, that in the world to come we may see him as he is, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Would you like to be seated for our first reading? <coughs> A reading from the second letter of Peter. We did not follow cleverly devised myths. When we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty, for he received honour and glory from God the Father. When that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased, we ourselves heard this voice from, come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this, as to a lamp shining in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. This is the word of the Lord.
Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. <coughs> Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it's good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Peter did not know what he said. And while he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent in those days and told no one any of the things that they had seen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please do be seated. <laughs> well, I have literally just yesterday, in fact, uh, returned from holiday in some of the wilder and more remote parts of both Devon and Cornwall. Despite the unpromising weather, my husband, Steve, and myself actually did manage to walk some good chunks of the southwest coast path, which was our intention. You might spot there's a slight stiffness in the movements this morning as my uh, knees and muscles uh, adjust. Yes, there has been rain, lots of rain, but there have also been those wonderful occasions when the clouds have lifted, the sun has broken through, and the wild grey seas and skies have been transformed into brilliant blue. blue. The grass growing high on the cliff tops to a sparkling emerald green, and the wild flowers dotted through the grasses as multicoloured jewels. And in some way I've reflected Maybe this beauty appeared even more beautiful as the landscape before us was so transfigured by light. On this piece of the Transfiguration, we just heard in our Gospel reading how on the mountaintop, Jesus suddenly appeared in the sight of his disciples to be himself completely transfigured by light, so much so that we're told the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. And the disciples were eyewitnesses of this glory, as the Apostle Peter later reflects in the reading that we had from the second epistle of Peter. Within this vision of light before them, not only did the disciples behold the figure of Jesus transformed, but they saw the light-filled figures of Moses and Elijah. Why these figures? Why this vision of glory now? This new vista opening up before the disciples, transforming their seeing here on this mountain top. Well, the experience described as the Transfiguration occurs shortly before Jesus' entry into Jerusalem and before the events that lead to his death and resurrection. Peter 
I think really overwhelmed by this mountaintop experience, longs to hold on to this vision of light, and he begins to garble about building shelters for Jesus and for his visiting companions. But this isn't a moment to be memorialized, to be held on to in a way that as human beings we so often seek to do. Rather, it's a moment that points to a deeper seeing of Jesus, and therefore also to a deeper seeing of what the future holds. Within the dazzling appearance of Jesus, the disciples are to behold a truer vision of who Jesus really is. He is the one who is filled with the very light of creation itself, the light of God's very presence. The one of whom Peter recalls the divine voice on the mountain declaring, this is my son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. With the appearance of Moses and Elijah at Jesus' side, Moses the lawgiver, Elijah the prophet, the disciples are also to understand more of who Jesus really is, as the one who is the fulfillment of both the law and the prophets. But their appearance also points beyond, beyond the present moment, to events that are to come. In Jewish understanding, and according to the witness of biblical and intertestamental writings, that's a mouthful, <laughs> both Moses and Elijah are understood to have directly entered heaven and experienced God's life beyond death. Now, many of us will be familiar with the Old Testament story of Elijah, caught up in a chariot to heaven. Do you recall that? Caught up in a chariot to heaven. Perhaps we're less familiar with the tradition which would have been known to Jesus' disciples and to the early Christians of Moses also himself having entered heaven and seen the true temple of God there. These intertestamental writings, that is, writings of the period between the Old Testament and our New Testament, are referred to. They're referred to, for example, in the New Testament letter of Jude, which directly quotes an intertestamental book called The Assumption of Moses. So that's your homework. Go and find the clue in Jude. <laughs> the appearance of Moses and Elijah at Jesus' side points us also to the ascension of Jesus, where following his resurrection, Jesus' resurrection body is likewise taken up into heaven, never to die again. Having faithfully walked in the dark valley of the cross between the Mount of Transfiguration and the Mount of Ascension, we see that the life of Jesus does not end in this dark valley but he is to take up his true place as Lord of all, his true identity as the one to whom is given all authority on earth and heaven. The transfiguration is a vision given to Jesus and to his disciples to carry them through the dark days ahead and through those days to the light-filled, life-filled future which is God's destiny for Jesus and for all who follow him, for those who form Christ's church, Christ's body still today. That's us, folks. That's us. The experience of the transfiguration was to give encouragement and understanding to the first disciples on the journey that they were travelling with Jesus. And this morning, really, my very, very simple message is to allow it to give us also encouragement and deeper understanding. As Peter reflects and urges the early church, may we know the prophetic message of God's kingdom, God's kingdom of hope, hope more fully confirmed. May we too be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in our hearts. I don't know what your personal 
life holds at present. Perhaps there feels to be much light and hope in it. Or perhaps there is a need to look attentively and trustingly to the message of new life to be found in Jesus as to a shining lamp in a dark place. For the message of the transfiguration is that everything and everyone can be transfigured and transformed by Christ's glory, just as the sun breaking through the clouds sheds light and glory on all in its path, bringing out the colour and the life that our eyes have been created to see. Nothing and no one is beyond that promise and possibility of transfiguration, however dark, painful or confused their path may have been. I do, of course, know something of what your life together as a church and community has held over recent times. And I encourage you today to look again to the promise of transfiguration. For as the local church, as Christ's visible body here in Solihull, you have a particular call to hold out that promise, to point to that star that is already rising, to the dawn that is already coming. And our hearts can have hope as we look to the future and begin to glimpse the landscape around us, made beautiful as it is transfigured by the light and undying life and love of Christ. On this Feast of the Transfiguration, we will shortly say these words as we come to share in the peace. Let me finish with them now to remind us that Christ will transfigure our human body and give it a form like that of his own glorious body. And we are together the body of Christ. We share his peace. Amen. Amen. And now declare our faith in that God of peace. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you like to be seated again as we are led in our intercessions? God of mountain, sea, and sky, creatures great and small, help us to renew our world. Bring light to our darkness, peace where there is war, justice where there is none. Where there is hatred, jealousy, and greed, bring real changes of hearts and minds. Restore lands that are destroyed, by climate change, avarice and violence. Restore wounded hearts to health, love and peace. Let humanity see your glory once again. Bring light to our world and to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of light, you bring understanding and order. Give wisdom to those in authority, those who teach or counsel, those who oversee our laws, and to us. 
We pray that Soliha will be a safe place where people can live together, grow and share. Bless our council, schools, hospitals, social services, police and all those who lead us, support us and keep us safe. Help us all to live in harmony. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of change, as we welcome a new rector-designate, consider development plans and look to the future. Help us to be open to growth, to listen to each other, as well as your Holy Spirit. May we look to you and look outside ourselves so that we can share your good news. Lord, in your mercy. God of light, send your Holy Spirit. Sorry, God of reassurance. You chose your son and called him beloved, and you call us your children too. We pray for all those who need reassurance and your healing touch. In particular, we pray for all those who are sick or troubled, in body, mind or spirit, throughout our parish, and in particular at St. Helens and St. Michael's. We pray now for all those known to us, that they may know your real presence and be our help and support. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of our hope, who banished the darkness of the tomb and death and raised Jesus to light, life and majesty, we remember those who've died, both from St. Helens and St. Michael's, and for their families whose hearts are heavy with sorrow. Be gentle with us all. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. remember too those whose anniversary of death is at this time. Thank you for all that they meant to us and for the hope that they and we have in you. Thank you that no one is forgotten by you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of light, send your Holy Spirit that we may know your light in our hearts and lives. Help us to reflect your light in all that we say and do, so that your kingdom comes. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you like to stand if you're able? Christ will transfigure our human body and give it a form like that of his own glorious body. We are the body of Christ. We share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's offer each other a sign of peace.
Holy God, receive all we bring before you this day and bring us also to that radiant glory which we see in the transfigured face of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is here. Is lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. And now we give you thanks, because the divine glory of the incarnate word shone forth upon the holy mountain before the chosen witnesses of his majesty, and your own voice from heaven proclaimed your beloved Son. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, and as we follow his example and obey his command. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in your glory. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. And let us pray for the coming of God's kingdom in the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, Heir of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. So let us pray. Holy God, we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. May we, who are partakers at his table, reflect his life in word and deed, that all the world may know his power to change and save. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray together. We thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet, prepared for all peoples. Amen. I think we're going to have the notices at this point before we go into the hymn and final blessing. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Bishop Anne. Thank you, Vivian. As always, you can sum up to people. I mentioned a couple of weeks ago that John Smith is holding an afternoon tea on Saturday the 19th of August. He has some volunteers, but as always with churches, he likes them all. <laughs> St. Helens is very good at cakes, so uh, cake to please. Suzette is in need of help with minor admin that she does on Wellbeing Wednesday. She has a helper, but they can't come every week. So if you are able to help Suzette on a Wednesday afternoon, please let Suzette know. I must get this title right. The licensing of the rector designate, Nick. There's a signing sheet at the back of the church. So now Fitz is likely to be rather full, so if you want to come, please get your name down on the sheet. For those of you who knitted babies' hats for Potter's Village, I had quite a lot I was unable to take with me. Last week I was given a considerable number more. So this week I posted a very large sack of babies' hats to Uganda. I was told to send them surface mail. I have no clue when they're going to arrive. <laughs> but please rest assured they really, really are appreciated. 
And then lastly, just to cheer you up, Christmas Fair had their first meeting. <laughs> <laughs> it's 14 weeks' time. <laughs> Thank you very much for that cheery thought. <laughs> Having literally just got back from holiday, I'm not quite sure I want to think about Christmas just yet, but uh, hey, preparation starts early. Shall we sing again? Lord, the light of your love is shining. <laughs> singers that's all I can say and uh, at that wonderful combined service for your rector designate yes whatever we're calling him at the moment I'm sure that between you uh, at St Alfred you're going to lift the roof and thank you too for some beautiful uh, piano music and accompaniment uh, this morning it's greatly appreciated I believe there will be a chance for conversation over coffee is that right so I do hope a number of you will be able to stay and I look forward uh, very much to that but let's turn now to the final blessing, and indeed a special acclamation you will be invited to join on this feast of the Transfiguration. Christ Jesus, the splendor of the Father and the image of his being, draw you to himself, that you may live in his light and share his glory. 
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. By the appearance on earth of our Saviour Jesus Christ, God has broken the power of death and brought life and immortality to us. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For though darkness shall cover the earth, and with it darkness the nations, the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. By the appearance on earth of our Saviour Jesus Christ, God has broken the 